Okay, now I'm gonna take off the uh, air intake. So I'm working on a Detroit uh, 853. It's a marine boat, um, or it's a, it's a boat. Um, so this is a marine engine that has a uh, <clears throat> uh, heat exchanger to cool the uh, engine rather than a radiator and a fan. And um, I'm, this is my second video trying to diagnose oil in the, or water in the oil or coolant in the oil. Um, in the first video, I went over um, how I replaced the oil cooler, but uh, that did not turn out to be the culprit. So the only other place is the head. So here in this video, I start dismantling the head or um, I dismantle the engine so I can get to the head and I end up taking the head off in the end. So taking the air intake off is pretty standard. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but anyway, I ended up taking that off. Here we go. This should come right off. Orbit pad right here in the middle. So we don't get dust and debris in here or our loose tools in here. And so the next thing I have to do is uh, drain the coolant and take the exhaust off, which here's the exhaust. It's uh, fairly substantial. So the uh, exhaust comes out here, just a uh, straight exhaust from the motor. And then it comes up here and uh, mixes with, where does it mix with water? I think right here, the water comes down through here and uh, has a block, water comes right in through here and it has a block so that only water can only go this way and exhaust is coming up here. Well, it looks like uh, some, some water can mix here too, but anyway, the water only goes this direction mixes with the exhaust and then shoots out here out the back of the boat but before i can take the exhaust off um I, and also drain the coolant although you can drain the coolant without doing this got to close the seacock so this is my seacock which uh this right here is where the uh, salt water or the lake water the ocean water comes up and comes in here where it's filtered. There's the housing to catch barnacles or whatever. It goes down here and it goes into this pump, which pumps it uh, that way. And it goes on the uh, left side or the port side of the engine up into the heat exchanger. So I'm just gonna close this all the way so that the seacock is fully closed. You want to work with these too so they don't get stuck. You sometimes barnacles get in there and, and you can't close them all the way. So that's good and tight now. So now I know seawater can no longer get into the into the boat here. Um, also, you know, there's two engines here. I got two V853 Detroit diesels. Um, this engine I've never had a single issue with other than, you know, just normal leaks and tightening things up. This engine, I've done a complete in-frame rebuild, and now I'm dealing with water and the oil again. Very frustrating. So we close that, on to next step. So I got rid of the hatches. You don't want any of the hatches, plus this cross beam here. Put the, that all over there. Uh, space is gonna be an issue when I start taking things apart. So I think I'm gonna try to put this whole exhaust thing right under there. Um, I have all those pads down to catch any uh, water or oil. Um, and I think it can sit under there for a while while I uh, take this head off. Um, but I'm going to have to create a safe space to start putting things where I'm not going to lose them. Um, a good system is plastic baggies. So to put all the small little nuts and bolts that come off. But right now we're going to drain the system. So to drain it, the actual, the, the best place, the lowest point on the engine, and right now the only thing in here is uh, just water, tap water, because um, 
I had already drained it to take the oil cooler off. So I'm actually just draining it again. So I'm just going to let the bilge pump get it all. The bilge pump is uh, just will take the, all this tap water and uh, bring it right out into the, uh, just spit it out into the ocean. If there was coolant in there, I'd then speak of the bilge pump now, pretty loud. I need to get a quieter bilge pump. But if there was coolant, I would capture the coolant and uh, either try to reuse it or, um, so if there, if there was coolant, I would try to recapture it. But right under here, there is a uh, valve. Where is it? Somewhere under here. Gonna have to feel around for it. Oh yeah, right there, right here. That valve right there that lets coolant out. Or in this case, it'll just be water. Can I get it? Oh, here's another one right here, actually. Maybe I can get this one to spin. Just easy. Oh, yeah. oh it's spinning. There we go. I'll just spin this one. Now that's draining. Get the other one draining too. I don't have both of this going. other one under here. I'm not going to be able to get it. That one's draining. And this one's draining. All right, so both of those are draining. You can see they're on the inside of the engine here. And that just drains down into the bilge and eventually makes its way over to the bilge pump. And uh, that's simple as that on how you drain your cooling system. So I'm just inspecting the underside of this uh, air intake and uh, there's rust here looks like there's some crud here although where the air goes in right here um, sometimes it does get wet um, and there's like a leak right up there and the water comes down and mostly goes on this you can see that got a little rusted that uh, there's an oil filter um, housing, so it's a little cruddy, but uh, this gasket's still in good shape, so we'll be saving that. And uh, these flaps, this is what closes when uh, you want to shut the air off to the motor. And then it locks, locks in place. So that kills the motor, locks in place over here. So the only way to reset it is to flip that up. But this looks pretty good. So we'll try not to lose any of these screws. And we'll put this into a safe place to store until it's be pretty much the last thing we reinstall. So I guess I'll tuck it way under there. All right, so to take this off, it looks like first we need to take this off. And then this is attached to the head here. So that has to come off. So both of these coolant lines need to come off. And then to get this off of here, all this needs to come off. Detach it from here. Um, this needs to come off or over here. And then this needs to come off here or probably down here more likely better spot for it to come off. So all that needs to come off. Uh, need to disconnect this uh, oil ch um, check stick, the oil stick uh, from the exhaust manifold and uh, this wire which is a, um, a thermostat, that's the thermostat housing, that needs to come off. I need a better screw on there. Uh, needs to be disconnected from here. 
Um, and then down here, all these hoses need to come off. Each of, each of these hoses, maybe this hose and this hose. And then maybe the, all this will come off and this top piece will come off in one piece. I can set it down there. And the manifold will come off, I guess, in one piece and I'll set it down there. Probably gonna be fairly heavy. So let's get busy doing that. I guess first I'll get these cables out of the way. Get down in here. You just replace the bolts the second you take them off. You put them right back in there. It's the easiest way not to lose things. I'm not sure if you can see this. This is the uh, shut off cable. I just want to get these cables out of my way here. Oh, see? I didn't even notice that. They have a bolt underneath them. That would have dropped down into my engine. Still hear that draining. All right, now I can get this cable out of the way. Pretty much. All right, that's out of the way now. So, cable out of the way, and um, we can start taking these off. They don't always come off easy, but... They've got to come off soon. Sometimes put a screwdriver in there. They just sort of weld to the uh, metal. Okay, we'll loosen it up the best we can. All right, it looks like it's going to move now. Put a little muscle into it. I don't have a lot of muscle, but... All right. There's that one. One.
And I guess we'll remove them. I don't know, it's a little easier. All right, put that over there. All right, that one should come off. Get these lower ones off. So I got the head off. This is the bottom of the head. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so this is this this is the uh, cylinder that was leaking water. You can see it's got a little rust here. But so this cylinder has rust too. And this is the cylinder that was leaking water here. I don't see any cracks in the block. But this has a whole lot of rust. It's almost like this cylinder hasn't been firing. So, must need a new fuel injector. Or the fuel injector needs to be cleaned. But all of these O-rings look good. These rings, they look good. This ring, looks good. This ring looks good. A little carbon build up, but that ring looks good. So, a little rust here and a little rust here. I'm not seeing any cracks. Not seeing any cracks. So the water had to be going here this way so that means it would have been coming in over here but i think these are the water this is where water comes in here here now i did find this so this little piece of whatever was actually just hanging out right here after i took the head off or right here it was like right there so where did that come from? It wouldn't have come from anywhere up here. It must have slidden down into here. And then when I took the head off, it just moved down. Because if that was in there, the freak, how could that be in there? But this is what it looks like. It looks like this O-ring failed somehow. This O-ring goes right here. Or it goes in right here. So it looks like this O-ring failed somehow. That's the only way water. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, this isn't good. Or right here. Crap. That is not good at all. So right now, it looks like that's the culprit. Uh, and it's on the block. So there's a, basically a 
crack or a chip between the o-ring and the cylinder in the block and uh, water must be that o-ring must have failed because of the heat there or something water is now getting into that cylinder because that is the cylinder with the water here's a close-up picture of it um, I don't know how it deteriorated but the head itself looks good let me know what your thoughts are Thank you.